Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held a meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin today, during which the two leaders focused their discussions on the coordinating mechanism between the Russian and Israeli militaries and Jerusalem's demand to prevent the Islamic Republic of Iran from entrenching itself militarily in Israel's northern neighbor, Syria. Prior to boarding his plane in Ben Gurion International Airport, Netanyahu emphasized the importance of his trip and disputed claims that referred to his meeting with Putin as the first since Syrian forces downed a Russian reconnaissance aircraft during an Israeli operation against Iranian targets in Syria. <laughs> ואכן אנחנו עושים זאת. מאז כמובן שוחחנו בטלפון כמה פעמים, לרבות לפני כמה ימים אחדים. The Israeli leader further stressed the importance of ensuring deconfliction between the Russian and Israeli militaries to prevent the dangers of friction and clashes between the forces. השיחה בוודאי תעסוק בכמה נושאים, אבל מבחינתנו מוקד השיחות זה הנושא של מניעת ההתבססות של איראן בסוריה. התבססות של מדינה שאומרת במפורש שבטרתה לחסל אותנו. אתם יודעים שכשאני אומר שאנחנו פועלים נגד זה, אלה לא מילים בעלמא. אני גם אכנס כמובן לפרטים עם הנשיא פוטין, כפי שאנחנו נוהגים לעשות, על מנת להבטיח שהצבא של רוסיה וצבא ההגנה לישראל מתואמים באופן כזה שנמנע חיכוך ונמנע התנגשות בינינו. עד היום זה הצליח, חשוב שזה יצליח גם בהמשך. It is important to know that since September of 2018, Russia and Israel had experienced tough tests on the Syrian front. According to Professor Ephraim Inbar, president of the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security, who frequently joins us on TV7's Jerusalem studio panels, Israel's eager to strengthen the two countries' coordination of military activities in Syria and prevent further friction between the two sides. With the leadership of uh, Russia, which is, of course, uh, Putin, and uh, to try uh, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we do not get into conflict with the uh, Russians. We uh, have uh, freedom of action to go after uh, Iranian targets. Uh, so this has to be clarified once again to the Russians. While Israel seeks to bolster its freedom of operations on its northern frontier, its primary enemy, Iran, is facing an increase of both internal and international challenges. Amid growing economic pressure and domestic criticism of Tehran's persistent compliance of the 2015 nuclear deal following an American withdrawal, the Iranian architect of the multilateral agreement and the country's top diplomat, Muhammad Javad Zarif, caused an uproar across the Islamic Republic when he announced his resignation unexpectedly on his Instagram account on Monday. As was reported on TV7Israelnews.com, Zarif's announcement came just one day after he laid out his vision for Iran's foreign policy in an address to the University of Tehran, in which he deemed multilateralism a key element for his country's success, a position Iranian hardliners vehemently oppose. While Minister Zarif gave no reason for his decision, sources in Tehran reportedly claimed that his resignation was motivated by growing resistance to the nuclear agreement by Iranian hardliners, who attacked him regularly and demanded his resignation. In a turn of events, however, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani announced that he does not accept the resignation of his foreign minister, an American-educated scholar who the Iranian leader referred to as responsible for holding the front line in Iran's battle against the United States. In a speech to Iranian officials in Tehran, President Rouhani stressed the importance of perseverance amid Washington's efforts to expand sanctions against the Islamic Republic's financial and oil sectors. توانی که امروز آمریکا گذاشته در مسئله تحریم علیه سیستم بانکی ما هست فروش نفت ما هست و در سایر زمینه های اقتصادی امروز خط مقدم ما در برابر آمریکا وزارت خارجه 
بانک مرکزی و وزارت نفت While Iran's army of ministers are engaged in sustaining the battered country from possible collapse, President Rouhani insisted that Foreign Minister Zarif, together with Tehran's central bank governor and oil and gas minister, maintain the three most important positions that safeguard the country from intensifying external pressure. البته بقیه وزرای اقتصادی هم در خط دوم هستند اما خط اول مربوط به این سه نفر میشه و من میخوام از هر سه نفر تشکر بکنم به خاطر ایستادگیشون به خاطر توانمندیشون هم از آقای دکتر ظریف هم از آقای دکتر همتی هم از آقای مهندس سنگنه اینا نیروهایی بودند که در خط مقدم این مبارزه ایستاده بودند و ایستادند البته بقیه دستگاه های اقتصادی ما سازمان برنامه و بودجه ما اقتصاد ما همه اینها فشار روشون هست اما عمدتا فشار به این سه بخش هست While in Jerusalem, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu welcomed Zarif's decision to resign, stressing in a statement on his Twitter account that as long as he leads the country, Iran won't get nuclear weapons. Israel's main enemy within the Iranian establishment, Qasem Soleimani, the commander of the elite Quds Force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, said that Zarif remained the main person in charge of Iranian foreign policy and that he maintains the support of the Islamic Republic's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Meanwhile, in Tehran, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad met separately with Iran Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei and his Iranian counterpart Hassan Rouhani for the first time since the war in Syria started some eight years ago. The Syrian leader's office said in a statement that during his visit, President Assad thanked his hosts for the vast support it provided his regime with and agreed to continued cooperation with Iran at all levels for the interest of the two friendly nations. The statement added that both sides expressed their satisfaction with the strategic levels reached between the two countries in all fields.